Boreda. Is, is, that, is that okay? Yeah. Uh, I will not talk about the Scandinavian historic role on Anglesey. I will talk on our tidal projects in Anglesey. I think we created a mess there in the Viking era, but let's leave that behind. Yep, you left that out. We, we are a tidal developer. We have, since a decade back, and uh, with the help of around 50 million euros, uh, developed this system called Deep Green. It's an underwater kite that flies based on, on the ocean currents that push this wing through the oceans, and we have the turbine and the generators on board and push the electricity down the cable. I'll, I'll show you a little illustration of this. It's a 12-meter wing, and this is a half-megawatt device. This design will be put uh, in the ocean uh, outside of, of Holy Island in Holyhead Deep towards the end of this year. And it will be our first commercial scale deployment. We would have spin out from the military aircraft manufacturer Saab. It's good that it's something good is coming out of such a company as well, I think. Uh, we're 55 people. Sweden, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and Wales is the place where we commercialize and develop the commercial scale activities. We are since one and a half years back listed on uh, the stock exchange, First North, in Stockholm. And the success of that introduction is to a large extent thanks to the collaboration with, uh, with WEFO and our, our, uh, ERDF here in Wales. Uh, in order to make that investment attractive with all the risks in an emerging industry, uh, the, the platform funding that was matched with WEFO made that possible for us to secure substantial investments from, from shareholders in Sweden to invest here in, in Anglesey. We also have, since many years back, substantial collaboration with the European Union and Horizon 2020 programs and so forth, uh, targeting different areas of technology development. We are members of Marine Energy Wales, and I think everyone can just look around the tables here and see that this is now a force in Wales, and it means a lot for self-confidence and for signals to, to politicians and, uh, and the Welsh government that we're here and we're serious in what we're doing in creating this new industry. We also have another owner uh, linked to the European Union uh, in Kick In Energy. They have around 100 engagements in, in, uh, in renewable and, uh, and green investments. And we are their largest investment uh, out of those 100 with the technology we have. And what we do, this is an illustration of it. We fly, fly this kite in a shape trajectory of an eight. Uh, and this principle is heavily patented globally, all relevant markets. And we've proven it since three three years in the ocean in Northern Ireland. So we're very confident that we get the numbers together with the performance of this system. And the uniqueness with this, because we have this principle and work in this way, we are able to operate in very low tidal and ocean currents. This makes us complementary to conventional tidal systems. Uh, we don't want to be in the same waters. We don't compete on the same natural resource, uh, which makes it easy for us to collaborate and, uh, and work together with others because that dimension of competition is non-existent. Um, this also means that we double, when this technology is operational and we exploit this, we will double the potential of tidal energy in Wales. And we will make it eight times as large on a global scale compared to what is published by, by our colleagues in this industry. So, okay, Holyhead Deep, this is where we are. Uh, it's probably the first low-velocity tidal project in the world. Uh, we're installing the first commercial-scale device this year. And this first stage of development is a 30 million euro project where WEFO is a substantial and key part in making this happen. Uh, we use, whenever we can, local supply chains, and we see great collaboration with companies such as uh, Holyhead, uh, Marine, and Boatyard, 
uh, and most import and also others for manufacturing, construction and installation. We have an agreement for lease of 10 megawatts and I'll say a few words on our plans for expansion up to 80 megawatts in a while. What we also do when we establish ourselves here is, is of course, to, to, to create a, a local team, a team here in Wales. We are, it says 15 here. Since of yesterday, it's 16 full-time uh, jobs uh, in Holyhead. Uh, we have a very nice office in the main street in Holyhead with a visitor center. So if you're passed by Holyhead, you're welcome to come in and, and take a look there. It's an old coffee shop, so it's, uh, it's really accessible. We, we really try to, to engage in, in different settings and forums to spread the word of this opportunity, this industry, which is relatively unknown. So all, we all have a great job in front of us to really explain the advantages and the role of this industry for Wales. I normally say in, in this context that Coal and coal mining meant a lot to Wales for maybe a hundred years or so. Uh, this will be bigger and it will be forever. No one will ever be able to take away this resource from Wales and it's never ending. So I think if you look at you know, it from that perspective, looking at WEFO and the Welsh Government's support of this, I think it's both visionary and wise to really invest in an area where you have that long-term everlasting impact to be created. We think Marine Energy Wales is extremely important. I hope that there are no one in here that is not a member of Marine Energy Wales. If not, there are application forms there at the table so you can join, join forces. Uh, we tried to talk to, to politicians, both the Welsh Assembly and of course uh, the people in Westminster. Uh, and the main topic for that is related to the risks that Gerard is talking about. We all need to, to find smoother ways for consenting to reduce those risks. It has a major impact on the investment cases to bring the big money in. If we keep that uncertainty of consenting, it's going to be more costly to track capital. And uh, we still have other risks that will make those costs high. So we need to work on that. And of course, the, uh, the power purchasing and the CFDs or other systems to support and reward the ones that produce electricity. We're also... Uh, working together with the Welsh government in other places uh, of the world from the export perspective in trade shows, which I think is a great, great collaboration and a great job from the Welsh government in doing that. Gerard talked about grid access, and I will not go into those details. You already got a good, good briefing on, on what we're doing here. I can say that we have been looking at investment cases for Tidal in many corners of the world. And to be here in Anglesey in this area creates an opportunity to build one of the lowest cost, lowest investment grid infrastructures in the world where we can find. So it's not just the, the, the road that the God meant to use for this. I think the whole aluminium plant and the shutdown of that, if you look at the short distances and what this means for the large scale projects, it's a fantastic opportunity to be in this area. And I think that also Re uh, reflects why eight developers are also knocking on the doors and are willing now to, to progress and go forward in this area. And for the future, we, we handed in a scoping report to NRW uh, this February, where we now are looking into the full potential of, of the lease area we have with Crown Estate. And it's at least 80 megawatts, so that is what we're going for in this scoping report. And we all know what significant impact scale will have on cost of energy. So we think that it's absolutely necessary for us to, even if it's a staged deployment, it's long term, we need to talk about larger scale arrays to be able to compare apples with apples uh, when we face offshore wind and, and other sort of uh, competing or complementary technologies. And Building those arrays, this is where the real investments will go in, go into Wales and where the real money will come in. This is in the range of 200 million euros uh, of investments to create this, uh, this energy producing system. And if we start counting jobs and, and, and growth, uh, it's, it's going to be really nice numbers that come together for this. And of course, um, by doing this and establishing ourselves in Wales, 
This will also be the natural manufacturing site for, for system integration, for service maintenance concepts, and so forth. So we foresee that Anglesey will really be an assembly and export hub for global expansion. And if we do this right, Gerard, uh, I think that it's not just Minesto that will make those claims. So this South Stack lighthouse here, I think is about to become a symbol of tidal energy, which is quite attractive. And if we look at the low flow markets where we are, uh, we have substantial markets in all corners of the world. Uh, we're now building a test site in Taiwan. We have co collaborations ongoing in Norway, US, and we're also investigating Chile. And I think this is about it. Thank you very much.